Hello, and welcome to another Guardian Asset Management training session. Today we're going to talk about conveyance condition. In this module, you will learn about conveyance condition, inspections, securing of the property, roof repair, debris removal, broom swept condition, pools, seasonal services, winterization, utilities, documenting, and photo requirements. Conveyance condition. A property must be undamaged by fire, flood, earthquake, hurricane, tornado, boiler explosion, or mortgagee neglect and be left in a safe and sanitary condition. A property must be secured, the lawn maintained, winterized, and must not contain interior or exterior debris or personal property. The interior must be in broom swept condition and vehicles must be removed. If a property is damaged due to mold resulting from the mortgagee's failure to protect and preserve, the mortgagee must remediate the cause of mold and complete the other required PMP actions to minimize further mold and or water damage prior to conveyance of the property. Properties will no longer convey with a tarp present. All repairs must be made in pre-conveyance. Reconveyance. A condition called reconveyance is the result of a property being conveyed with issues that render the property unacceptable to HUD. This happens when a vendor reports a property is in conveyance condition when it in fact it is not. Reconveyance takes place at the expense of the vendor who failed to identify the conveyance condition issues in order to remedy prior to the conveyance. Any losses incurred by the client may be charged back to the original vendor who claimed in conveyance condition status incorrectly. Post conveyance condition. Once a property has conveyed to HUD, it is placed in what is called post conveyance condition. This is most similar to the REO concept of marketing condition, meaning the property needs to be placed in a condition to sell on the open market. This involves repairs that are considered cosmetic including painting, carpet replacement, appliance replacement, etc. Submit bids to make the property attractive, appealing, and comparable to the other homes in the neighborhood. Post sale. If the work type for this order is initial secure post sale, all locks rather than just the lock on the main entrance should be changed. Removal of debris or personals should be bid, but any other work necessary to replace the property in convey condition that HUD has listed as a pre-approved line item in the mortgagee letter should be treated as urgent and done per allowable if possible. Pre-sale. If the work type for this order is initial secure pre-sale, all personal items present must be photo documented but left undisturbed. Actions to secure the property should leave the owner able to access the property should he or she return. This means changing locks only on the main entrance, not on all doors, unless new locks on all doors are the only means to secure the property. Please note investor for any specific guideline changes. Inspections. All aspects of a property need to be inspected to determine if any issue exists which would make the property unsafe, unsanitary, or damaged. This includes the interior, exterior, roof, and perimeter of the lot. Please take wide-angle photos for each interior room, all exterior walls including crawl space, roof, electrical meters, plumbing, and mobile home foundations. If the property condition is not adequately documented by photos. Conveyance condition issues that are found after repairs are made may be charged back to cover the cost of repairs needed. Mobile homes. Photographs for a mobile home are to include the mobile home's identification information, VIN and HUD data plate. Additionally, well-documented photographs are to be taken underneath the home to confirm the mobile home is affixed per HUD guidelines. If it is determined that a mobile home is in need of proper fixation in compliance with HUD regulations, vendors are to notify Guardian. Documentation supporting the bid of fixation request is also to be submitted and include the following. Bid to affix to HUD regulation, photos of non-compliant fixation, and a cost estimator supporting the bid. Appliances. At an initial secure vacancy inspection,
inspection or other walkthrough documentation of a property, all appliances present, including kitchen appliances, HVAC, well, septic, sub pump, dehumidifier, water heater, boiler, and furnace must be photographed. Any damages to appliances must be recorded and repair or replacement must be bid. Any missing appliances must be noted on the property condition report or in the notes section in Aspen if no PCR is required along with photographs of where the appliance should have been found and a bid to replace. Personal property and debris. No personal property or debris shall be removed without written authorization from a guardian unless the debris or personals constitute a health hazard or direct danger to the property. All property and significant debris should be documented with photographs and noted on the property condition report. If a violation notice resulting from personals or debris in the yard or other inappropriate location of the property is present, the contractor must follow the guidelines for reporting violation notices and debris and guardian will make a final determination. Damages. At an initial secure vacancy inspection or other walkthrough documentation of a property, all damages, whether or not addressed at the time of this work order, must be thoroughly and clearly photographed, a specific bid addressing the damage, and described on the property condition report. Close-up and wide-angle shots are required. Photographs must be date-stamped and clearly labeled as to which damages and what locations they depict. Particular attention should be paid to the following. Any moisture buildup in the basement, foundation damage, any structural damage, missing or damaged siding, water damage, plumbing damage, mold, broken glass, any broken doors or windows, non-functional locking mechanisms, any damaged stairs or railings, missing shingles or other roof damage, any signs of leakage or any missing critical systems or appliances. Violations and notices. All violations and notices posted on the property must be photographed clearly enough to be legible. Standard property preservation work according to this guide should still be performed on the property if possible. Appropriate actions must be taken to cure and mitigate anything that may lead to additional fines, legal action, or damage to the property. Any posted notices or violations should be described in the property condition report. Photographs must be clearly labeled as to what violations or notices they depict. Core photos. The following items are considered core photographs for any interior inspection, including vacancy inspections and any documentation taking place at an initial secure. External core photos. Wide angle shots of all sides, yards of the residence and any other buildings, fascia, soffit, underside roof edges, full rooftop, general vegetation condition on 100% of the property, three sides and top of HVAC, close-up of any damages, including cracks in foundations or walls, with measuring device for scale. Internal core photos, wide shots of all surfaces, walls, floors, ceiling, counters, attic, underside of rafters, close-up of all sinks, bathtubs, shower, plumbed appliances with any visible plumbing shown, close-up of all appliances or locations where the appliances should be if they are missing, Close-up of all damages, including hazards, source of mold or water leak, foundation cracks in basement, etc. Please remember to explore every nook and cranny of the property, exterior and interior, opening any panels, cupboards, breaker boxes, other accessible electrical access points, hatches, closets, etc., and photographing the inside, especially at initial secure and other forms of first-time vacancy inspections. Securing. Lock change. Both knob locks and existing deadbolts are to be changed when securing an FHA property. Initial secure. Presale. One entry door as specified on work order. Final secure. Post sale. All entryways that provide immediate access to the living area, attached garage, or basement. Double lock sliding doors. Secure overhead garage doors only if no other locking mechanism exists. Place padlock in the track. Unplug the automatic garage door opener, if applicable. Lockbox installation, depending on investor. 
At an initial secure, a 24-hour emergency contact number must be displayed in the front window, or if no front window is accessible, on the front door. It must clearly advise anyone interested in the property or in gaining access to the property to contact the number displayed. Properties must be secured at the time of an initial secure and re-secured if needed on any visits thereafter to prevent unauthorized entry and to protect against weather-related damage. All exterior doors and windows must be secured. Pre-sale securing will be completed in such a manner as to protect the interest of guardian, its clients, and the occupant, and should be completed only to the primary entranceway door so that the mortgager can still enter the property via a side or back entrance if he or she returns. Post-sale securing should include rekeying all locks and doors. If it is impossible to secure all exterior doors and entrances without attaching new locks, note of this must be made on the property condition report. If any necessary securing cannot be completed within HUD allowables, the contractor should use the most reasonable means available to secure the property and bid after the fact. Reglazing windows. HUD prefers reglazing in lieu of boarding windows unless the local law requires boarding or if the property is situated in a high crime area and is prone to vandalism. Provide bids to reglaze all broken windows. Boarding is not to be completed unless written approval is received or work order instructions state to board and bid after the fact. If bidding to board a window, include a bid to reglaze too. Address verification. It is of utmost importance that work is performed at the correct property. It is the sole responsibility of the field contractor to ensure that work takes place at the location indicated on the work order. If there is any question as to the accuracy of the address supplied on the work order or any other documents provided, contact Guardian directly. If contact cannot be made, the field contractor shall attempt to confirm the address with the contract manager and use best judgment whether to continue the initial secure. If antique hardware exists, do not remove the hardware and instead secure with a padlock and hasp if no other locking mechanism exists. Provide clear documentation including photos that substantiate why a knob lock or handle set cannot be utilized. Caution is to be exercised when removing lock sets and replacing locking mechanisms. Do not damage or otherwise cause deterioration of the door upon which work was performed. Document key codes and location of doors on the PCR work order in Aspen I property. For doors and windows, do not brace or nail windows or doors shut. Replace locking mechanisms on windows or doors if inoperable or missing. Double lock sliding doors as needed. Detached and attached garage doors and outbuildings should be secured with a padlock and hasp if no other locking mechanism exists. Overhead garage doors. If an automatic garage door opener is present, unplug it and leave the remote key in the kitchen counter drawer. Secure overhead garage door on the interior by installing a padlock in the track if no other mechanism exists. Doors need to be left in a condition that allows for opening and closing without the use of the automatic opener when the padlock is removed. If the door is broken and will not open manually, submit two bids, one to repair and one to replace. Boarding and reglazing guidelines. Provide bids to reglaze all broken windows. Include location of each window, dimension per window, steps needed to reglaze, and the materials to be used when bidding to reglaze. Boarding is not to be completed unless written approval is received or work order instructions say to board and bid after the fact. Only bid to board if required by local code or in high vandal areas. In the event of the presence of any pets, livestock, feral animals, infestation, pests, etc., at a vacancy inspection or other PMP work order, appropriate action should be taken based on the local codes and regulations. This potentially means contacting animal control authorities, exterminators, and other professionals or government agencies as necessary. The property must be free of animals, vermin, and insect infestations and any dead animals, vermin, or insects must be removed. 
bid work per allowable, and any emergency work for the remediation of the above should conform to the standards set forth in the HUD mortgagee letter. Roof repair. Properties are no longer considered in conveyance condition if there's a tarp on the roof, regardless if the tarp is pre-existing. Active leaks need to be repaired or patched prior to conveyance. Repair or patch the roof within the allowable. If the repair exceeds the allowable, submit a bid to repair or patch the damaged area. When an active leak is found, repair the roof for the HUD allowable. For clients that allow bid after the fact or BATF, tarp temporarily only if the repair cannot be completed for the allowable and bid after the fact. In addition, submit a bid to repair the damaged area. Bidding after the fact and invoices submitted for tarping that exceed the HUD allowable will not be accepted. For clients that do not allow bidding after the fact, complete or bid tarping or repair for the client allowable. Include dimensions of damaged area, dimensions of repair area, location of the damaged area, materials to be used included but not limited to shingle type and rating, sheathing, underlayment, flashing, drip edge, and vent system when providing a roof repair bid. If any interior damages exist due to the roof leak, submit a bid to repair the damage on a separate line item. Debris. Submit bids to remove interior and exterior debris, hazards, and personal property in cubic yards. Provide an itemized list of debris, personals, and hazards in the comments. Exterior debris includes all items outside of the property's main structure. This also includes items in shed, detached garages, etc. Only if the outbuilding is unsecure. Interior debris includes all items found inside the property's main structure and any secured outbuildings. This includes rooms, closets, cabinets, attics, basements, garages, etc. Bids need to be separated by type and location. Interior debris, interior hazards, exterior debris, exterior hazards, and personal property. Debris includes home improvement materials that match the structure or color of the house, such as bricks, tile, and shingles. Items of no value are not considered personal property. This includes household cleaners, laundry detergents, soap, health and beauty products, cat litter, boxes, bags, etc. Debris does not include freestanding appliances such as refrigerators, air conditioners, washers, dryers, and permanently affixed vanity mirrors. Again, remember, bids need to be separated by type and location. Interior debris, interior hazards, exterior debris, exterior hazards, and personal property. Hazardous material. All hazards are to be bid in cubic yards as a separate line item as debris. Bid at the HUD allowable for debris removal unless local codes require special disposal procedures. Hazards include but are not limited to paint cans, tires, raw food garbage, cleaning chemicals, pool chemicals, any other chemicals, anything that poses a health risk. Broom swept condition. In order for a property to be in conveyance condition, no debris may be present and the property must be left in broom swept condition. Ensure all rooms, cabinets, closets, crawl spaces, attics, basements, sheds, etc. are included when completing and bidding the removal of debris. On FHA properties, floors, bathtubs, sinks, showers, and counters cannot be dirty, which includes being covered in dirt, cobwebs, insect remains, or other debris. The exterior and interior of appliances are to be free of dust, dirt, hazardous materials, or condition. Such appliances include but are not limited to refrigerators, dishwashers, ovens, stoves, laundry appliances, and interior HVAC units. The cost to put the property in broom swept condition is included in the cost per cubic yard of the interior debris allowable. A separate fee may not be charged. If a property is not conveyed in broom swept condition, the debris removal may be subject to a chargeback. Pools. Secure pools with a cover that prevent entry, either deliberate or accidental. Fences need to be secured to restrict access if possible. 
secure in-ground pools, including hot tubs or spas that share the same filtering system. Use of a standard tarp held down by sandbags or bricks is not acceptable. Bid to board pools. If local code does not require pools to be boarded, bids to secure a pool using a safety cover are acceptable. Pool safety covers should meet the American Society for Testing and Materials F1346-91 standard, which requires that a pool cover be able to hold a minimum of 485 pounds per 5 square feet. Bid monthly pool service if required by law. Include utility activation and contact needed. Bid to remove above ground pools if they are in poor condition, non-functional, and cannot be covered. Also include a bid to fill in the depression. Seasonal services. Grass cut season is April 1st to October 31st for all states except for Alaska, which is June 1st to September 30th. An initial grass cut is permitted at the beginning of each grass cut season. Initials may be completed when needed during any month of the year in the following states or territories. Alabama, Arizona, California, Florida, Georgia, Guam, Hawaii, Louisiana, New Mexico, Nevada, Puerto Rico, South Carolina, Texas, and the Virgin Islands. At and after initial secure, grass cuts, initial and subsequent cuts, include mowing, weeding, edge trimming, sweeping of all paved areas, and removal of all long clippings, related cuttings, and incidental debris, newspaper, flyers, bottles, etc. The disposal of all clippings and incidental debris should comply with the jurisdictional requirements. Grass should be cut to a maximum of two inches in length. Grass and weeds are to be cut to the edge of the property line, trimmed around foundation, bushes, trees, and planting beds. Grass and weeds should also be trimmed flush with the fences and other construction that would normally require trimming. Any excessive vegetation presenting a risk of code violation or obstructing the public right away should be trimmed to be in compliance with the local and HOA codes and ordinance. Dead trees or tree limbs presenting a safety hazard or danger to the property must be removed or trimmed. Desert, xeriscape, rockscape landscaping must be maintained through removal of weeds, cutting or trimming of any grass or shrubs, and removing of cuttings and incidental debris. Properties with more than one acre of grass should be cut within an acre perimeter of the house, with any outbuildings edged, and the rest of the property's grass should be bid. Snow removal. The field contractor shall maintain a safe and accessible property throughout the winter season. Snow shall be removed from the entire entryway, walkways, porch, and driveway following a minimum 3-inch accumulation. Contractors must comply with local codes and ordinance governing the removal of snow and ice. Snow removal should occur 24 hours after the end of the snow event. Winterizations. Properties are to be winterized between October 1st and March 31st unless climatic conditions require earlier and or extended winterization treatment periods. Pressure testing will be requested via a winterization or dewinterization work order. 35 PSI for 30 minutes. The winterization process must include cleaning toilets and a complete draining of all plumbing and heating systems. Winterization will follow all local requirements and circumstances necessitated by the property and the climate. Responsibility for winterizations. Because every property may have unique needs to prevent damage during the winter, the contractor is responsible for completing all winterization work appropriate to the property. This includes draining and blowing yard irrigation systems, adding non-toxic antifreeze to all gray water traps and toilets, shrink wrapping toilets to prevent use, draining any water storage tanks, and placing winterization notices. Any damage resulting from improper winterization that could have been reasonably prevented will be the sole responsibility of the contractor to cure and remediate, and Guardian Asset Management will not be responsible to reimburse the cost of remediation. Share Utilities If the property shares utility service with other units, access to utilities for other units must not be impaired. Wells If the water supply is a private well, the contractor shall turn off the well at the breaker panel and tape off the breaker. Disconnect the supply line between the property and pressure tank and install hose bib on the pressure tank side of the breaker. The hose bib shall be tagged for water testing. 
All pressure tanks shall be drained. If pump is surface mounted, drain pump housing. If submersible, then disconnect the check valve and drain all pump, suction, and discharge pipes. All fixtures shall be winterized. Utilities. Utilities are to be inactive unless needed to protect the property. If there is a sub pump or dehumidifier present, etc. At condominiums, keep water services and utilities on if the systems are shared with other units. Where there is an existing sub pump, check to make sure it is operational. If it is, leave the electricity active to prevent flooding. If the water supply source is a public system, contact the utility company to turn off the water at the curb. Do not cut water lines or remove water meters. If the water supply is a private well, turn off the well at the breaker panel and tape off the breaker. Disconnect the water supply line between the property and the pressure tank. Install a hose bib on the pressure tank side of the breaker. For sub pumps. Where there is an existing sub pump, the mortgagee shall check to make sure that the sub pump is operating. The mortgagee shall leave the electricity on regardless of whether the property is located in a state where utilities are required to be off. Bids. Bids submitted to Guardian should contain the following. Description of damage. Clear photos. Location of damage on the property. Repairs to be made. The reason repairs are causing or may cause further damage if not repaired, if applicable an itemized cost estimate to repair the damage, and photographs of the damage from various angles and distances to support the need for repairs. Bids after the fact also need before, during, after photos, and justification for the actual cost, in some cases, as laid out in the HUD mortgagee letter. Additional repairs. Demolition Guidelines. In such cases where a local jurisdiction has determined a property to be uninhabitable and mandates demolition of a property, obtain approval from Guardian Asset Management. Report violation or demolition notice to Guardian Asset Management. Mold Guidelines. If a property is damaged due to mold resulting from the mortgagee's failure to protect and preserve, the mortgagee needs to remediate the cause of the mold and complete the other required PMP actions to minimize further mold and or water damage prior to conveyance of the property. Report all mold and uploaded damage report. Provide bids to remediate source mold. Provide bid to clean and treat contaminated materials. Documentations needed. Crime or police reports when needed. Window signage, winterization stickers, Winterization checklist, PCR inspection form, or ICC checklist. Violations and notices. All violations and notices posted on the property must be photographed clearly enough to be legible. Standard property preservation work according to this guide should still be performed on the property if possible. Appropriate actions must be taken to cure and mitigate anything that may lead to additional fines, legal action, or damage to the property. Any posted notices or violations should be described in the property condition report. Photographs must be clearly labeled as to what violations or notices they depict. Work completed. All work must be clearly photographed before, during, and after completion of said work. Photographs must be clearly labeled as to work completed, locations, as well as before, during, and after status. Photo requirements. Photo documentation is critical to establish both the property's condition as well as documentation of the work performed at the time of service. Provide before, during, and after photos from the same angle clearly demonstrating all work completed. Provide photos of street sign front of property, address, exterior walls, front and backyard, roof, basement, garage, detached buildings, porches, attic, and all interior walls. Provide wide angle shots of every interior room that depicts ceiling, floors, and appliances. Provide photos of all damaged areas and violations and submit bids to repair when applicable. In conveyance condition status. Property status including, but not limited to, the following. Work has been performed according to the HUD guidelines. Property is secure from unauthorized entry. All locks have been changed. Property is free of boarding and damaged windows. 
Grass height does not exceed two inches. No violations posted. No damage present from vandalism. Winterization is completed. All debris, interior, exterior, personals, hazards, etc. have been removed. Property is in broom swept condition. The pool or spa have been pumped, treated, or covered to HUD guidelines. No active roof leaks, no tarps present, no hazardous conditions present, no damages to the exterior or interior of the property. Properties are not in conveyance condition when work has not been performed to HUD guidelines. Property is unsecure and does not prevent unauthorized entry to the interior. Grass exceeds two inches. Violations or notices are posted. Hazardous condition is present. Damage is present from vandalism. Interior and exterior debris and hazardous materials are present. Personal property is present and a bid has not been submitted to remove or store personal property. Tarp present or damage is present on roof. Boarding is present in a non-approved boarding areas. Interior or exterior damage is present. Remember, it is extremely important to have all conveyance condition work orders turned in on time. Our clients have very specific time frames given to them by HUD to complete the work. If the work is not completed on time, it may not be reimbursed by HUD. Therefore, if vendors do not turn in their ICC work orders incorrectly and on time, there may be possible chargebacks. Here are some possible conveyance related circumstances that may result in a chargeback. Incorrect determination of conveyance condition. Failure to thoroughly document the property condition at each visit. Insufficient completion photos for all items preventing conveyance condition. Failure to submit bids for all items preventing conveyance condition. Excessive bidding on items that do not have a standard allowable. Always supply before, during, and after photos. If you have any questions, please contact Guardian directly. Thank you again for joining.